this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what I'd like to do is um, take a look at uh, some statistics that we got from the 2016 elections. As I mentioned previously, um, what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at politics through the lens of economics, because politics and economics are sort of one thing, really, right? Um, economics really governs our politics and politics uh, goes hand in hand with economics, right? And we've already sort of um, put out, I think, three videos on economics, and we took a look at some, you know, interest rates and rate of growth and differential accumulation and stuff like this. What I'd like to do right now is take a look at some hard data specifically from politics, which is um, one set of data available from 2016 elections. Um, and I, took, I dug down a little bit and I took a look at some other statistics as well. But I want to take a look at this one because this is the most, this is the one that's going to come up the most and it has already come up the most regarding the elections. And, um, and it's come up in my conversations since the elections. And I live in Canada, so I can't even imagine how heavy this conversation is in the United States right now, right? Because it's pretty prevalent here, right? And uh, during these conversations, what I end up doing is sort of throwing a wrench in the wheel, uh, sort of playing a devil's advocate and taking the statistics that most people are sort of um, regurgitating that's being propagated through mainstream media and just I take it down one level deeper right and the reason I do this is because uh, uh, it's good for people to question the system it's good for uh, it's good for conversation for dialogue to dig deeper into statistics because mathematics is really what governs our society, what governs every aspect of our lives, right? And it's one of the most common questions I get asked um, teaching mathematics is, what am I gonna use this in the real world, right? Which is one of the reasons I put out two videos, I think in 2008 or 2009, where I talk about uh, where we end up using math in the real world, right? And why mathematics is important. So what I'd like to do is, take a look at where we can use mathematics and politics, right? Because we've already taken care of some economics, might as well take a look at some hard political data. Now, from the 2016 election, this is the information we got regarding the popular vote. We ended up getting um, the following. There's, now let me just give you the, the population data. There's 320 million people in the United States. Okay, that's important to know. Uh, approximately 320 million, okay? There's approximately 251 million eligible voters for the 2016 election. So let's say 250 million eligible voters. And 137 million voted, okay? So a little bit more than 50% of the population ended up voting in these elections, which is which isn't really that good, right? So that's really important to keep. That data is really important to keep in mind when we start, you know, we go one layer deeper and we take a look at the popular vote, who voted for who, okay? So for Hillary Clinton, 65.9 million people voted for Hillary Clinton. So we're gonna put Hillary Clinton here. H. So 65.9. This isn't dark enough. Let's do this in black. Let's see. What do we got? 65. Okay. So 65.9 million voted for Hillary Clinton. For Donald Trump, 62.9, well, 63.0 million voted, right? So Donald Trump will call D and 63.0 million, if we're rounding up, okay? This is what the total election results were, popular results were approximately for the whole United States. Now, if we take this data and we take out California, right? So let's take a look at California. California, 8.8 .8 million people voted for Hillary. 
8.8 million voted for Hillary and 4.5 voted for Donald Trump. Okay. Now, if we subtract this from this, this is what we end up getting. Uh, 57.1 million voted for Hillary. California, Donald Trump more got more of the popular vote. Out of the 50 states, if we take out one state, Donald Trump got more of the popular vote. Now, California, um, and that's by how much is that? The difference here is 1.4 million, right? So 1.4 million in favor of Donald Trump. Might as well put that on there as well. So the population of California is let's drink this up. Population of California. Yeah, let me close this guy off. So our pen doesn't dry. California population. The population of California is uh, 24 million, right? So out of the, I guess, 250 million, California were about 10% of the eligible voters and 14 million voted out of 137. So about 10% of the population that voted and was eligible to vote. So I'm gonna assume that's gonna be 10% of the population in the United States as well. Um, actually, California population, I have it here, is uh, 39 million. So it's a little bit more than 10% uh, of the population. Okay. So if we take out one region, California, and it was mainly, if you look at the um, one other thing, I'll, uh, if you're interested, I will provide links to these charts, this data, uh, in the description of this video. If you look, you take a look at the the map of the counties, and this is a black and white, but online you can see it in color. If you take a look at the map of the counties, uh, the way it works out is uh, there are only certain centers uh, that a huge percentage voted for Hillary Clinton. One of them being Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, right? It was like 93% of the people in uh, Washington, D.C., and District of Columbia voted for Hillary Clinton, which is really the establishment voting for Hillary Clinton, right? So in those centers, Clinton got a huge chunk of the vote. In a lot of the other areas, the outskirts, right? Where I guess the votes coming from the electoral college, right? That's something that people are questioning, right? Where California represents, you know, 55% of the electoral, or 55 seats out of, uh, 538 seats so a little bit more than 10 percent again right so it's divide divvied out pretty evenly right you can see the electoral college here right you can just go to the wiki site you can see how many votes each candidate got and what percent and stuff like this on what each state is right so if you take a look at the vote count by county and the electoral college and stuff like this there's you know, with people who are mentioning that Hillary Clinton got more of the popular vote and she should be in office, uh, the question come, all of a sudden comes into play. Do we believe in the centralization of power? Do we believe that people in centers of big, you know, big cities, centers of the states, 
right, where a lot of power accumulates, should they be allowed to make the de decision for the entirety of the country, even for people, you know, thousand miles away, two thousand miles away, right? Should we allow the centralization of power to govern us, really? That's sort of the, the question I bring up to people who quote me the statistics that Hillary Clinton got more of the popular vote, right? Which is one reason the Electoral College was put into place to protect people really from democracy. There's a lot of laws in the United States put into place to protect people from democracy, right? Um, so that's one statistic uh, that I like to bring up regarding the 2016 elections. And um, in my conversation so far, I haven't come across anyone that has, you know, was prepared to reply to this, right? So. I'm sharing this video. I wanted to look at the statistic um, because I think it affects both people. If you believe in a, if you believe in the economy, if you believe in black and white, right and wrong, if you don't believe in shades of gray, if you exist in on those extremes, then this is something that both extremes and shades of gray should take into consideration because it poses a, a lot of questions. It brings up a lot of questions about the system, about what we are choosing to be uh, the system we're choosing to be governed under and how that should play out and if that's really a fair system or it's not a fair system okay and uh, there's a lot of statistics um that i dug down into this i found i found this stuff cool i love data so this to me was uh, the, one of the most simplest simplest places where um in a conversation uh, it can be brought up where the conversation can go beyond just rhetoric and uh, in being stuck in one place, just looping itself that this is the only reality there is, right? There are other perspectives and that's what mathematics does. That's the beauty of mathematics because it brings up questions, right? It's not as much, uh, science is not really about answering questions. Science is about asking questions and mathematics is one of the tools we have at our disposal to answer that to answer questions uh, to ask questions right to go deeper into a system okay um voter voter turnout i mean you could go deep into this i, I looked at some of the charts for voter turnout uh for the sexes um and the different age groups and a lot of this stuff is available online and these should be in color i just print out black and white um u.s voter um popular vote for president at percentage of pop uh total population and this thing starts off in uh, 1700s uh goes all the way to 2012 and this is cool because as more and more people started getting the right to vote you know the chart starts going up and the population increases and basically it's about 40% uh, of the total US population that gets to vote. And, uh, you know, I was out of the, you know, there's tables and stuff that you can take a look at. I'll provide links to these. The most, a lot of this is available on Wiki. Um, so you can take a look at uh, the percentage of people that voted it was 50, 54.6% of eligible voters voted. And you can dig down deeper into that um, and take things as far as you can and one of the most amazing data sets that everyone should take a look at and you should compare it with other data as of who's voting and who's not voting but basically um, a united states population by age and sex and these charts these charts here if you start looking populations and countries and stuff like this they really reveal a lot about what's going on economically and politically within a country okay and uh, you once you start going down this rabbit hole it's actually quite brilliant uh, because it you know you go beyond the rhetoric you go beyond what uh you you filter out a lot of noise right and you start uh understanding 
why certain things are turning out the way they are, right? Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to make this video because it's uh, it's something that I've found interesting. Um, and if you're interested in this, if you dig down deeper and you find cool statistics, for sure, uh, post comments or send me messages and stuff like this. We'll maybe we'll dig down a little bit deeper and make something more formal, analyzing data from the 2016 elections. Um, but this data is something that you know took me a very short short time to take a look at and have as a tool uh, as a conversation piece uh, during gatherings where you know if people are defending or opposing a certain point of view i'd like to sort of play devil's advocate and throw this in there and uh see what happens right see see where the dialogue takes us does it take us you know it usually doesn't get stuck in a loop for in the rhetoric realm right then the conversation breaks free and there's more discussion on about the system and what we truly want to believe in how we want to function right uh that's it for now um and uh we'll do we'll do more stuff related to politics and economics we'll take a look at our data and uh, not take really any sides but really just pose questions for us and um, get us thinking about the system how everything works out okay and that's it for now i'll see you guys in the next video